Before I start, small enterprise, uh, we make lots of free resources and tools. Check out the Crow hillcompany.com all we request in return is that you subscribe to our channels this youtube channel or instagram whatever you like it really does help a startup like this right on with the video i was once chatting to a gentleman who was interested in managing a funk band i was in and i think the one sentence that lost us that opportunity was when he asked us what's your ambition for this band and we said to get a record deal and he just stopped in his tracks and went that's not an ambition it's a legal document it's part of the journey it's not the be-all and end-all. Now, if you were to say to me that you want to tour the world, shagging people, getting hammered and taking drugs, if you want to touch people with your music, win Grammys, all of these are things that you can aim towards. But a legal document, it's selling yourself short. The reason I bring this up is what is it that you're giving up? Can you answer that question in a way that is not too broad. Saying being successful at music, being a successful media composer, being a famous rock star, these are too broad. These ambitions are too ill-defined. And what do you mean by giving up? You're never gonna play an instrument again. You're never gonna pursue this dream again. You'll ignore opportunities as they come knocking. John Williams has always wanted to be considered a contemporary classical composer, for want of a better description, a concert composer. I hear that he laments the fact that he's thought of as a film composer, yet he's not given up. He's found an inordinate amount of success, maybe not in his eyes, but certainly in ours. If you cannot define what it is you're giving up specifically, it is highly likely that your ambitions were always poorly defined alongside what you considered to be success and the various milestones you would pass through to achieve that success. The first thing I'll say about giving up is don't. In an industry such as ours, we are greatly outnumbered by the people who want to do our jobs. This means a disproportionate hierarchy will always form. If it was easy, everyone would do it. And if everyone could do it, we'd be getting paid as much as junior doctors. If you accept something is difficult, it ceases being difficult. It's expected. And if you look at any other profession, pursuit, that has a disproportionate hierarchy, you'll always find that it is not just the hard work people have put into doing that. It's simply not giving up when most people do. And most people give up which is reason enough not to. Hi there. I think there is an absolute, certainly within the creative industries, that there are two fundamental traits and they're exactly spit. My view of the creative industries is that there are two fundamentals which are exactly split down the middle. A pie chart with two halves. One is lunch, the other is tenacity. Lunch is just being a nice person to be around. Someone people want to work with, spend time with, go into the abyss with. And tenacity is the ability to carry on regardless of everything that stands against you, but to not hit your head against the wall, to not become bitter and chippy about all of this shit that's befallen you. It befalls us all, but to use these failures, these mistakes, these letdowns as lessons and slowly hone our craft till opportunity comes knocking. So many times when I do monologues of this type, I get people who, dare I say it, sound a bit chippy, saying you have to appreciate that success, certainly in your industry, is about 95% luck. And I know that there are some successful people who say that. Conversely, I also don't like it when you get a big pop star giving advice saying, just believe in your dream and your dream will come true. Yes, that happened to you, but have you watched the beginning of that Kanye documentary? That first episode, he is as successful is he is because he can do that. Luck is where opportunity meets preparation. Did you know that most people who win the lottery, I think something ridiculous like 95%, you'll correct me, I'm sure, go bust within the first five years of receiving their winnings. They're ill-prepared to make the best of an opportunity that a life-changing sum of money has to offer. Yes, you could, I could, probably write the next installation of the saga that is Star Wars, but it's highly likely we wouldn't make it to the finish line. Not because we weren't capable, but because we lacked the experience, the preparation for the opportunity. 
I'm gonna start this as I'll end it. These things are never do as I say. More often than not, they're don't do what I did. And my wife, very sensibly, and I thank her for it, said, that's fine, give it up, just don't tell anyone, because you may go back to it. I took 18 months off, started this vlog, and talking through my experiences in this vlog with friends made me rationalise what I was getting wrong with my job. So I was able to return to it as opportunity arose with a much more positive attitude. I think one of the, I remember I was, I was just over the other side of that hill where that tree is. Um, I remember asking the question, what is music for television for? And it suddenly dawned on me, it's about helping tell a story. And suddenly all of that ego bullshit just faded away. If it's not telling the story, it's not right. There's no argument between you or the director. Sure, always try what they say, but speak to them if you don't think it's working in the context of the story, not the sound, not the music, not the theory. Oh, it's gorgeous. If you can't answer what you're giving up, you are poorly prepared for opportunity. And that's what I would suggest as the first thing to do to pull yourself out of the abyss is to just go, I'm going to take a minute. How about we take that lofty ambition and break it down into workable chunks? Work out, say for example, a series of achievable tasks. At this time of year, a lot of us are thinking of going back to or joining a gym. And when you do, you'll often get a physical trainer doing a little bit of a kind of diagnosis as to how fat, how fat you are, how unfit you are, how much you eat shit. This is not, I think, by any cruel design, but it just sits in with the business model. And that is, this person who is assessing your fitness or lack of therein, is gonna provide you with a number of simply impossible, painful and humiliating tasks, which will mean you give up on the gym, but worst of all, give up on yourself. I was listening to a podcast and it's like, just go for a walk for 10 minutes and then next week, make it 15. These are all reachable. And the same can be true of us pushing forward in our careers. Next week, the beginning of a new year, I'm just gonna contact one agent to say I'd love to be a composer's assistant. The following week, try and contact two. If you're working on your showreel, a piece of music, finish what you're doing and don't lock yourself away for hour after hour after hour. It's not necessary. Four hours a day is all you need to be able to write music effectively, provided you use that time effectively. If you don't believe in the saying that luck is when opportunity meets preparation, then don't prepare. But if you don't value success, value your time, and create tasks that are achievable, you'll be out to sea. I think the other thing that you may have to face up to is a radical change in lifestyle, workflow, in the relationships with the people around you. And this may seem daunting, but I don't see how that is a more radical change than turning your back on your ambitions, your dreams, and the support that you have demanded of your friends and family as you try and chase that dream. It might be time for a pivot. It might be time to take a hiatus. It might be time to go and work on something else, earn a bunch of cash, do a mega uber stint, build up a, a war chest before venturing forth, but this time better prepared with a better, more clearly defined set of goals, a roadmap. And roadmaps are just that. They're not Bibles, they can be changed. The support for me is like an arch. And whilst there may be an anchor stone, if none of the other stones around it are in place, it will cease to be an arch. So for me, support is not about charity. It's about mutual help. And whilst it's great if that A-list composer gives you a bunk up, it's very likely he or she will be doing that because of the help and support that you have given them. Quite frankly, because you deserve it. So be wary of those friends, those peers, those family members who want to drag you down or cut you down. The reason they're doing that is you're holding a mirror to them. And for many people, the idea that you could possibly look forward to a Monday as much as you do a Friday is utterly terrifying because often those people have at some stage given up. They will want you to do the same.
giving up is succumbing to the projections of others. It's really not for you. Are you sure about doing this? Wouldn't it be better if? It's succumbing to the allure of material things, cars, holidays, houses. But what is the point of all of that if you only enjoy two days out of seven? And this is, I think, why a lot of people also give up. Is their destination oriented? And there's a reason why Elton John still plays live. It's not to buy more paintings and tiaras. It's because he loves the act of making music. It's a better job than most. So while setting you those goals and targets, the reachable ones, work out how you can enjoy your life, not as you're heading for a destination, but as you wander through it, adding and contributing to the continuum that is music. So where support is concerned, don't be a victim. That is to allow yourself to be victimized by others. And often victimization is simply an act of projection, of jealousy, of people cutting you down to size. And it's not about getting back at them or proving them wrong. It is simply thanking them for being your muse, giving you the encouragement you need to show yourself that you won't give up because most people do. Our job is not a competition. If you need to take a break, take a break. To be able to step back from what you're doing, the direction you've taken, the choices you have made, and the preparation you have or haven't done. Give yourself time to think it through. Be open-minded, pivot, diversify, but for God's sake, don't give up. This startup is a small one, just a few of us doing it. We love making all of these free resources and tools. The only thing we ask for in return is for you to subscribe to these channels, to become part of this community, which we hope will be a safe space for a diverse number of people from all over the world, from different backgrounds, who can share their experiences and offer each other support. We hope to be opening doors for everyone here in the near future so subscribing and dinging that bell may bring you benefits one of those is always handy as well lots of love and uh, hopefully soon we'll create a space where we can all talk in the meantime leave some comments down below lots of love don't give up